Hey everyone, my name is Kion and welcome to the first monthly update on the Gateway Game Project. We have been doing a lot of things, but in this update, we'll concentrate on the modeling part of things for this game. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Now, the first obvious question is, is why are we talking about models in this first episode? Well, the reason why we're creating models before the game is that the game requires models to look good and because it's kind of the basic structure of the game, you know, with no models of no game. We're just starting out by creating the models that will be featured in the building update, version 0.1.0, like for example, the mega bay, the booster, the ship, etc. Before we get into the models, let's talk about the importance of optimizing and creating models for games. When you're creating a model for a game, you want the game to run smoothly and to perform at a high frame rate. This includes having models and textures look good, but also keeping the models optimized for the game and roughly at a lower poly count. In texture at a good resolution. This is why we are creating the models again with optimization and game in mind, and not just use the ones that Lewis used for his animations, which have a much bigger poly count. This also reduces the amount of effort your PC makes during the rendering of every single frame, especially for a lower end and less powerful computer. Now that we have a basic understanding of what to keep in mind with modeling assets for a game, let's take a look at the assets currently in development for Gateway. Lewis started working on the booster at the start of May. He started by modeling the booster's body, which is made up of several rings. He started by modeling one single ring. After that, he duplicated that ring for the entire booster. This model includes a lot of details, which a lot of them are covered by other parts. This model also includes the quick disconnect port and the thrust bunk. Lewis also worked on the booster interior with the pipes and common domes. He then modeled and textured a simple Raptor Engine version 3 model. Keep in mind that this is only a placeholder, and once more info on Raptor 3 is released, we'll replace it with a better model. I also started working on the orbital tank farm at the end of April. The model does not include the vertical GSC tanks, because they are getting removed as the time of scripting this video. The model includes all of the horizontal methane, liquid oxygen tanks, and the high pressure helium tanks. It also includes all the most recently added tanks as part of the tank expansion because SpaceX is getting rid of the old GSC tanks. Lewis then worked on the hot stage ring model for the super heavy booster. This model is not just a ring with the holes, but it also has the underside reinforcement which was installed on the real hot stage ring to prevent it from collapsing. Also, Lewis previously modeled and textured the water storage tanks, which are used for the water deluge system, which are used for sound suppression. Josh Joey Space kindly offered us his amazing ship quick disconnect plate, so massive shoutouts to him for letting us use his model for the game. And to finish off the modeling part, I modeled a mega bay by using a tool called FSpy, which allows you to get the position and the camera's focal length from the image. With this, we can better model our object using the imported camera with the reference in the background. This model includes some lights and some small details as well. This model will be used for the build of Starship vehicles in the game, and also for the Starbase launch site. Now that we talked about the modeling part of things, let's get into a very important part of making a model look good. And that's the texturing. For texturing, we opt out to use a procedural texture method. This involves using Blender's procedural shader nodes to create some of these materials. After we made the textures, we then need to export it to our game engine. We decided to use Unreal Engine 5 for Gateway. Now, just like any other game engine, if we import our models, the procedural textures won't load correctly. Instead, we'll get this white color thing. This is because Unreal Engine 5 does not recognize the material with all of its nodes since it was created in Blender. So the solution to this problem is to do something called texture baking. This means that we are turning the dynamic data of our material into a static image texture. And we will later say to Unreal Engine to use our image texture as a, well, the texture for our model. Now we're not going to discuss everything about texture baking, also because this is not a tutorial, but I will try my best to try and explain things. Also, I will link a video in the description where you can learn more about texture baking in Blender. There are multiple types of maps for texturing, but the most common ones are Color Map, also known as Albedo or Diffuse, the Metaliness Map, the Roughness Map, the Specular Map, the Normal and Bump Map, the Emissive Map, the Hide Map, and a few others. But first, before that, we have to make sure that our model is UV and wrapped correctly. So to do this, we went ahead and created a new UV map, 
just for the final image texture, so Blender knows where to bake the parts of the texture to. After that, we will go to the UV editor, and we will unwrap our model. Now, let's go to the shading workspace and add an image texture. After that, we'll press new. For example, I'm gonna leave the resolution at 1K, but if you wanna make it, for example, a 2K texture, just Google the resolution and then set it here. After that, we will bake our texture. For this, make sure you're using cycles, as this will not work if you're using EV. Since we only want to bake the color map, select the fuse. After we bake our textures, we can save them for later use in our final model. So that's all for this month. Next month, we'll probably talk about the game UI and how it's going to work. So make sure to like and subscribe to get notified and follow the Gateway Game Project on Twitter slash X. As always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in our next update video. Have a nice day.